I want to welcome everyone who's joined us by Zoom today. I'm Janine Birchie Johnson, and one of my roles at Anabaptist Mennonite Biblical Seminary is Alumni Director. Today we're gathering to recognize three of our graduates who've been selected as the 2023 Alumni Ministry and Service Recognition recipients. This annual award honors alumni who've made outstanding contributions in congregational ministry, teaching, mission or peace work, spiritual direction or other ministries. Please join me in prayer. Empowering God with your people throughout the ages, you have called leaders for the church and empowered them with your Holy Spirit. As we gather here to celebrate the leadership of Martha Smith Good, Peter Stuckey, and J. Denny Weaver, we acknowledge your presence with them and with us. Thank you for the many gifts you have bestowed on them to be shared with your church and the world. Thank you for filling them with wisdom, patience, and hope for their callings. Bless this time of celebration and continue to call each of us to serve you and your people. Amen. I'm now going to turn it over to President David Bushert, who will recognize the three recipients. Well, good evening, everyone. I add my welcome to all of you who have joined us today to honor three of our alumni who have made outstanding contributions through their ministry and service. If you haven't already read the story about them, I encourage you to do that to get a fuller picture of their lives. I'm delighted to present the 2023 AMBS Alumni Ministry and Service recognition to Martha Smith Good, Peter Stuckey, and J. Denny Weaver. If you have received the certificate that AMBS mailed to you, could you please hold it up now or let us know if you didn't get it? Oh, wonderful, you've all got it, great. I think we weren't quite sure how long it would take to uh, to get them everywhere. But, it's actually um, as... still on the way to Columbia, but he printed okay. out his own. <laughs> okay. I wondered about that. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, for printing it out so you have the artifact there. <laughs> Congratulations to you all um, and uh, invite you to uh, hold up your certificate at the end of each recognition. I'll read a short summary of each one's contributions, and then each one of you will share for a few minutes. Martha Smith Good received a Master of Divinity degree from Goshen Biblical Seminary in 1977. In 1982, she became the first woman to be ordained as a pastor at Mennonite Conference of Ontario and Quebec, now Mennonite Church Eastern Canada. She went on to earn a Doctor of Ministry from the University of Toronto in 1988. In her more than 30 years of pastoral ministry, Martha served in campus ministry at Goshen College, in chaplaincy, and congregational ministry in Ohio, Indiana, Colorado, Illinois, and Ontario. She documented her journey into ministry in her self-published autobiography, Breaking Ground, One Woman's Journey into Pastoral Ministry, published in 2012. Martha and her husband, Gerald, are members of Wilmot Mennonite Church in New Hamburg, Ontario. Congratulations, Martha, on being named one of this year's AMBS Alumni Ministry and Service Recognition recipients. And I invite you to share a few minutes uh, with us now. Congratulations, Martha. Oops, I think you're still on mute, Martha. Can you hear me now? Is this when I'm supposed to give a longer or just a few yes. minutes? Oh, no, you can share seven, eight minutes or whatever you'd like. Yeah. Okay. I really appreciate getting this award. It's very honoring to me. And what I'm going to do tonight is just give a brief history of how I got into seminary and what the seminary did to me personally as a person in terms of finding my my outlook on life i was i was in, hoping to be a doctor when i was a child that was my dream but i that dream did not come to fruition because the church i was a part of was quite conservative 
and did not permit high school after grade eight. So my teen years were quite turbulent and I sought meaning in life. I did take a, a short nursing course and I enjoyed nursing, but I always felt there was something much more. So I went to Goshen College as a mature student after uh, successfully completing GED tests. And it was there that I began to find myself and find some purpose in life. But I was continuing to struggle with faith. I didn't know, was I a Christian? Was my faith real? Was there a God? And Norm, Norman Krauss, my academic advisor, was really helpful in helping me to find my own answers. He didn't give me answers. I had to find my own answers. And then when Millard Lind came one year, because one of our uh, professors were on, was on sabbatical, he was the one that encouraged me to go on to seminary. He said, you really need to go to seminary. Well, because I hadn't had high school, I always found academics quite difficult and I didn't think if I could that I could handle postgraduate work, but I did, I went to seminary. And I came there in 71. And when I first got there, it really felt that I had come home. It was such a wonderful feeling. I felt so, uh, felt like I belonged. And there were a lot of uh, single students there and we mingled with each other in the dining hall over meal times and other times. We, some of our conversations were very spirited and <laughs> there was always some controversy, but uh, many good relationships were formed. And there were very few women students at the time. I think there were four or maybe five full-time women students. So we were really in the minority. And uh, it was during some of my classes that I just kept wondering, you know, is God with me? How do I, how can I know that? And it was one day when I was reading the Old Testament and I was, I was really disgusted with Israel because they kept falling away and God kept bringing them back, kept falling away. And I remember speaking out loud in my apartment and saying, what's wrong with you? And it was like I heard a voice that said to me, I have been with you all your life and you haven't recognized me either. And it was at that point that I could, there was a real shift in my thinking. And that's when my real journey began, I think, into, uh, into beginning to accept myself and to know that my faith was indeed real. So I... I continued with my studies, but I was always kind of wondering, should I go into ministry? Hospital chaplaincy appealed to me because I was comfortable in a hospital setting and I wanted to, I could continue that. I knew the Mennonite church was not into ordaining women at that time. That was in the early seventies. And one of the faculty members suggested me to me that I go into a summer internship in a congregation and I protested and because I didn't think I could do that, you know, face the opposition. And he said to me, well, he said, you women have been talking all year about how women are supposed to get involved. Now is your opportunity. You can go and prove yourself. And my comment to him was, I don't think I need to prove anything. I just want to make sure it's God's call. And it was also during my second year at seminary where the women began, well, seven women, I think, began to meet in my apartment once a month for lunches. And we would begin to discuss some of the articles that were appearing in, in some of the papers about women in theological education. And we um, that was really, really helpful for me because I began to find began to discover that I was really feeling oppressed in a Mennonite church that had only male leadership and never seemed to understand what the woman's journey was like. And uh, the seminary administration got a little curious and a little distressed because we were meeting. And so I was called into the president's office to explain what was happening. And I said, well, if you really want to, the con the 
the community to hear, we'd be happy to speak to the larger community, which we did. And uh, it was what came out of that was a course was developed for women in leadership at the seminary. But I think the, the most important thing that happened to me was just the interaction with the professors. Gertrude Roten was a wonderful mentor. She always said to us, if God calls, God also provides a place for you to minister. And Millard Lind, he just kept believing in me and believing in me and kept encouraging me. And it was, it was such a positive feeling. I remember the last week of seminary, just before graduation, he was, do you know Millard, he, how he kind of shuffled down the hall. He came up behind me and put his arm around me and said, Martha, of all the students who are graduating this year, I would choose you to be my pastor. And that was very important. So after that, I, I went into congregational ministry most of the, for quite a few years. Um, but I would have to say it was, it was a seminary community that brought my life to more of a holistic approach in terms of physical, spiritual, and emotional. And I give the seminary a lot of credit for that because I am who I became today because of what happened to me personally at the seminary. And I think at this point in my life, I can affirm that the journey had its struggles, but I think the positive experiences far outweigh the struggles. And so again, I thank you for recognizing my ministry with this honor. And I pray that the seminary will continue to prepare students for ongoing ministry in the church and beyond. Thank you. And here is. Thank you, Martha, for your sharing and your rich story and uh, your journey in, in uh, calling to ministerial leadership. We're grateful for you. Our second recipient this evening is Peter Wood Stuckey. Peter received a Master of Divinity degree from Mennonite Biblical Seminary in 1971. In 1973, he returned to his home in Columbia to join in Mennonite ministry efforts there. And for 28 years, Peter has served as the pastor of Teosikio Mennonite Church, a church that his parents founded in Bogota. In the past, he lent his skills to the Mennonite Church of Columbia, serving as executive secretary and president. He's been involved with other Mennonite-related ministries in the country, including Seminario Biblico Mennonita de Colombia, Mencoles, a social service agency, Justa Paz, a center for justice, peace, and nonviolent action, Clara, the Latin American Center for Anabaptist Resources, and various ecumenical peace-building efforts. Peter has also served with international organizations as a member of the Executive Committee of Mennonite World Conference, and of the International Steering Group of the Decade to Overcome Violence of the World Council of Churches. Peter participated in writing the Declaration, an Ecumenical Call to Just Peace, which was adopted by Mennonite, uh, World Conference, sorry, the World Council of Church members in 2011, and recommended as a document for reflection, collaboration, and action for the worldwide Christian community. Peter and his wife, Leticia Rodriguez, are members of Teosakia Mennonite Church in Bogota. Congratulations, Peter, on being named one of this year's AMBS Alumni Ministry and Service Recognition recipients. And I invite you now to share for a few minutes with us. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, like Martha says, I, uh, I'm very honored by this, but also, I think, uh, unfortunately for the seminary, you're very limited by only choosing three because uh, because I'm sure there are other folks that are, are just as deserving and more so than I am. So uh, just to, to bear that in mind. 
uh, we do what we can in life. And and so far, God has given me the privilege of, of serving in the church and serving God. Uh, Mar uh, Janine suggested that we share a little about what the seminary meant, our seminary formation. And I'd like to talk a little about the professors. Uh, I think one of the, the lasting impressions I have about the seminary are the, the professors that were there. These professors were, were not only uh, highly, highly skilled and highly educated and, and well-formed, but they were also friendly. They were also uh, almost like a, a family. They, they kept us in mind. And uh, I remember being in Erlen Waltner's home and, uh, and, and with, with them, we only, we not only learned uh, the uh, seminary, seminary curriculum and, but you know i can i can mention i think almost all of them from gertrude Ro roden's greek class and uh leland harder and the church and ministry and jc wenger and the the uh the, the theology and john howard yoder and the preface to theology and jake ends in the old testament and uh Clarence Bauman and uh so many others uh Bill Clausen and and uh they were they were I I, I spent quite a bit of time at Bill Clausen's house and I think he died recently or a few years ago but um but all these folks were were so important in not only not only what they taught, but they were they were also mentors, and uh, they were people who were approachable and who shared their their knowledge. C. J. Dick and well, all of them. So. Um, I think they were also examples to us, and uh, so that was that was a very important part. Maybe maybe as important as the academic part was was just the the personal relationships we had. Um, we would uh, share over over the bag lunches down in the basement and uh and they were also very tolerant you know i i uh i was a little out of uh what should i say out of orthodoxy and in, in, in my way of my style of life and so forth but they always accepted me i would come to especially in the summertime come to the seminary with shorts and no shirt and maybe a cat on my shoulders and stuff and they nobody worried very much about that so that was that was uh very good um i also appreciate uh the the anabaptist focus of the of the courses Obviously, uh, something like Hebrew with Miller Lind, you can't give up, I don't think you can give up very much of an Anabaptist focus. Uh, I didn't do so well in Hebrew, actually. I didn't get such a good grade. But uh, but other courses like uh, Preface to Theology uh, was taught from a Christocentric point of view, theology from a Christocentric point of view. And... And of course, uh, J.C. Wenger's and and C.J. Dick's history and all those kind of um, all those kind of uh, uh, 
courses were were focused in in well in as much as a, a course can be i guess with an anabaptist kind of twist or view or perspective and so that is uh that has stayed with me and then um and then uh, the other thing i wanted to say is that the professors also supported uh, like extracurricular activities that had to do with ministry. So, for example, I was uh, licensed as a as a pastor at Hively for a couple years. You know, it was a two year licensing to work with the young people, and then um, then uh, C J Dick particularly was was helping promote church community services as it was starting. And uh, I became the coordinator for church community services. This was about in, in 60, 68, I think. And, and in fact, C.J. Dick had an old Studebaker Lark that he donated so I drove that around. That must have been one of the ugliest cars made, but it worked. And so um, that was sort of the church community service car. And then uh, Leland Harder was, uh, was quite involved with getting Partly Dave started. It was a coffee house for for street kids and for sort of having dialogue between the church people and and street kids or um yeah basically that and uh so lauren friesen was was uh i think he was maybe the first um uh, First manager and John Campen then and and then I was and uh, Leland was uh, helped get that going. There's the Presbyterian Church and the Methodist Church and the Hively Avenue Church were sort of behind that and people would come in to to sit with folks and and chat with them if they wanted to and listen to their stories. And um, so, and and I mentioned in in the article that that Jenny wrote up was we also it was during the Vietnam War and I had come from from uh, Indiana University with with that kind of concern and uh, so we organized. Uh, a silent vigil that we were going to do in front of the in front of the post office i had learned i had participated in a small silent vigil in bloomington uh on saturdays from 12 to 1 with the quakers and and so we decided to do one in elkhart well elkhart isn't your most liberal town and so so yeah that caused quite a hubbub that we were going to do this and so forth and like we couldn't get permission and stuff but I, I don't remember if we finally got permission or not but we went to the we went to the u.s post office there on main street and we we would line up like a yard apart right and, and just stand there and we had a sign that said what we were up to and and why we were there and you know, down in Bloomington, maybe it was maybe five or six of us that were there. And here in Elkhart, I mean, we just got a multitude to come out and 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 so it was all in front of the post office and around the corner and way down the block. And and so people on Elkhart, I guess they didn't like very much that the the town officials were trying to prohibit it and trying to keep us from doing it and so forth. So they joined in. And then, of course, there were 
sort of people taking pictures and all that. But that was supported by, I think it was uh, Lee Harder also who, who sort of backed backed us up in doing that so and help plan it so that was that was very significant too how the seminary you know not only academically taught us but you know enabled us to enabled us to to do different things um so i i, I after i finished seminary then i was at because church community services was during my seminary. And then after I finished seminary, I I was at the coffee house. And then I I also went up to afterwards, I went up to Clarence and Alice Bauman's Hermitage up in up in um well, it's around Yale, British Columbia. And uh, the the camp there, the Mennonite camp, and then you go up into the woods, and uh, that was more or less where I felt the calling to come back to Colombia, which made me very happy because because I was missing Colombia. Actually, there was sort of a an empty spot in my in my heart for Colombia and and Latin America. So I I did come back, and. Uh, that's not the end of my story, but that's the end of my intervention. Thank you, Peter, for your sharing. It's always a joy to connect with you and thankful for the times we've had over the years to uh, be in the same place and share together. Thank you for your sharing, for your ministry, for your for your life and work. We celebrate you tonight. Thank you. Our our third recipient of this year is J. Denny Weaver. Denny received a Master of Divinity degree from Goshen Biblical Seminary in 1970. Denny interrupted his seminary studies to serve with Mennonite Central Committee in Algeria. After getting his Master of Divinity, he earned a PhD from Duke University in Durham, North Carolina in 1975. He had teaching assignments in several Mennonite schools of higher education and is Professor Emeritus of Religion at Bluffton, Ohio University, where he taught theology, religion, and ethics for 31 years. J. Denny served on peace and justice committees for both Mennonite and ecumenical organizations. He led workshops for Christian peacemaker teams, now community peacemaker teams, and participated in three CPT delegations to Haiti. J. Denny has written or edited more than two dozen books and numerous scholarly articles on topics such as peace theology, Christology, the atonement, and Anabaptist theology. His autobiography, New Moves, A Theological Odyssey, is being released by Cascadia Publishing House this fall. J. Denny and his wife, Mary, attend Madison Mennonite Church in Wisconsin. Congratulations, J. Denny, on being named one of this year's AMBS Alumni Ministry and Service Recognition recipients. And we now invite you to share for a few minutes with us. Thank you. That's my certificate. <clears throat> Excuse me. As Peter and Martha said, I am grateful to AMBS for recognizing my work in this public ceremony. Thanks to Janine Bertie Johnson for making this day happen and to President David Bosart for his gracious words. This award is actually better than being named a saint. Saints are dead and I'm still here to uh, be able to say thank you. AMBS has been with me throughout my career, but not always in the way that I had originally thought. I went to AMBS with the goal of pursuing, pursuing an academic career and I graduated with two major academic complexes in mind. One was the Old Testament material that I learned from Millard Lind. Here was where it became clear that the Bible, starting with the Old Testament, had a plot line that began with Abraham and continued through Jesus. That learning served me well throughout my career. The second idea complex that I graduated with was Anabaptist history and thought which I learned from 
C.J. Dick, and J.C. Wanger. My years at AMBS was an epoch when Anabaptist studies were very popular, and I went to graduate school intending to be a professor and specialist of Anabaptist history or theology. Another impact of AMBS came when I began to teach. As is true at small colleges, I had to teach courses that were not in my area of specialty. I had to teach theology for which I had no graduate school training, but I did have one resource from AMBS, the informally published edition of John Howard Yoder's Preface to Theology Lectures. I had taken the course at AMBS and the printed version became my initial source for teaching theology. It was and still is my primary learning from Yoder. Over the years from teaching theology, theology became the primary focus of my academic interests and writing. From preface to theology, I learned that all theology is relative that theology always reflects a context, and as contexts change, theology is always subject to revisioning and rethinking. As a womanist theology once told me, God never wrote any theology. All theology is written by people, and until recent, recently by men. Since it's written by people, of course it can be revised, she said. The focus of my career became developing a theology specifically for the Peace Church, in contrast to standard theology that came from the established Church of Christendom. The course in Black Church, co-taught by C.J. Dick and a local pastor, had a profound impact some years later. As I developed theology for the Peace Church, I was looking at that project as an in-house discussion for Mennonites and other peace churches as marginal to mainstream churches. Out of curiosity, I wondered how other marginal groups might look at the same issues. From that course in the Black Church, taught nearly two, day, two decades earlier, I knew that Black theology existed, and I knew one name, that of James Cone. Reading a book by James Cone changed my worldview. From reading Cone, I realized that my approach to theology was actually dealing with issues of concern to all Christians. I realized that I was writing theology for all Christians, and I hoped that my Mennonite colleagues would understand that they were included. In a sense, all these impulses came together when I recently read J. Cameron Carter's Race, a theological account. He wrote that the seeds of, pass of racism entered the theological tradition when the early church fathers separated Jesus from his Jewishness. He advocated a, th a theology that built on the narrative of Jesus that continued the story of Abraham, but extended it to all people. With my learning about the Bible's plot line beginning with Abraham, about the relativity of theology and the existence of black theology, when I imbibed James Cameron Carter, I was still drawing on my AMBS learning. Beyond the academic preparation of AMBS, from, <clears throat> from my years there, I gained lifelong friends. <clears throat> Some like me went on to graduate school and academic careers, and we frequently conversed about the state of theology for Mennonites. Other friends from seminary became pastors. I've always assumed that writing theology was not an isolated activity. Theology is written for the church, and it is done in conversation with the church. Having friends as pastors was an important element of doing theology in conversation with the church, and was a long running benefit of studying at AMBS. As I hope these brief comments display, the learning I received from AMBS had a lifelong impact on my career. Thus, I do cherish this award. Thanks again to all who made it happen. Thanks, Jay Denny. So good to hear from you and reflection on your journey as a scholar and church leader. Thank you.
congratulations to all three of our recipients. And thanks to all of you for joining us tonight 